Things 3 is one of the most well-revered task managers for Apple's platform out there. However, with a barrier to entry of $50 for the Mac version, an additional $20 for the iPad version, and an additional $10 for the iPhone and Apple Watch version, it is also one of the most expensive upfront costs for a task manager. This can become even more difficult to swallow when there are so many great free options out there. So does Things 3 do enough to justify that high price tag? Let's take a look. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Langwish and I am a current student focused on helping you in your process of digital organization and productivity. And on this channel, I share with you all the tips and tricks that I've been using to organize my life digitally so that I can help you out. And if that's of interest to you, I ask that you click the like button below and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest content I'm putting out, including videos on things, as this probably isn't the only one I'm gonna do on this awesome application. Now today, we're gonna go through five different categories and evaluate things through all five of those categories, looking at what are the differentiating factors that set things apart from the other competitors. And these five features are design, adding tasks, organization, extra features, and price. And if you wanna check things out for yourself, I've got a link to it down in the description below along with any other information mentioned throughout this video. With that being said, let's jump into design. Now, you may brush off this category and think that how, how an application looks really isn't that important, but for me personally, the aesthetics of an application that I'm using, especially one that I'm using on a daily basis is huge. If an application is ugly or clunky, uh, when I'm using it, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna be fun for me to constantly be interacting with it. You won't wanna actually use an ugly application no matter how functional it is. Now fortunately, I think this is a big win for things. Now I am a big fan of Apple products and the whole Apple aesthetic. And I think the best way that I can describe things is that it feels like it was designed by Apple themselves. I've used other task managers in the past that can feel kind of cluttered and just there's a lot going on and it just doesn't look very clean. But I love how things just, you know, it's got just the clean white interface with, with all the stuff organized and it just ha strikes a nice balance between uh, showing you the obviously the information that you want to see, but just keeping it looking real minimalistic. And the awesome part is they keep this consistent theme carried over not just from the Mac version, but to the iPhone and Apple Watch as well, which are the versions that I use. And so there's just this consistent clean interface all the way through. Now the last little design bonus that I like doing within things, and it may sound kind of silly to you, but I love adding emojis to my different projects. Now, before you say I'm crazy, let me explain. Uh, I actually think it helps me in my productivity. And what I mean by that is when I'm looking through all of you know my list of projects on the side with things, uh, if I have emojis uh, that are relevant to the name of the project, it's much easier to differentiate uh, what each project is and I'm not having to actually necessarily read all the text, but I can just at first glance immediately know what I'm looking at. So I love that customization that Things gives you. I love the interface and overall, I think Things is one of the most aesthetically pleasing applications out there. Now our next category is adding tasks. Now I think we can all agree that it's of little use to have a pretty, beautiful to look at application if it's a pain to actually input tasks into the application. I mean, that's what you're gonna be doing every single day. And this is even more important for me recently is I've been trying to implement David Allen's getting things done principles. And the first step of that method is capture, which is this idea that, you know, we have all these things that we need to do. And a lot of times we just store them in our head, but that's honestly really not efficient or productive as you, it's harder for you to focus on the task in front of you when you're thinking about all these other tasks around you. So he talks about in his book of to have a system that immediately when you think of a task or anything that you need to do, you have a process that you can immediately get that task out of your head and into a system. And this is one of my favorite things about things. I'm gonna say the word things a lot. So obviously when you have the application open, you can enter tasks in there just like any other task manager. Although one thing I like to do is hit command N as that's just a little quick keyboard shortcut for adding tasks. However, it's when you're outside of the application that things really shines when adding tasks. Whenever I'm on my computer, I don't necessarily have to have things pulled up 
and I maybe am, you know, surfing the web or just whatever, and I think of something, I can immediately hit control space bar and things will have a little uh, quick little pop-up that immediately lets me type in the task, I hit enter and it sends it into my task manager. This is so awesome as it's just super quick and it really helps me implement those principles of GTD and get the things that are in my head out into the system. I also use Siri with my uh, iPhone, Apple Watch, HomePod, and I can uh, speak tasks I need to do. So, you know, when I think of something I gotta do in the shower, uh, which surprisingly happens a lot. You know, the shower is where a lot of the good ideas uh, of what I need to do come from. Uh, I can immediately just tell Siri and she'll send the task into my system. And then one of my favorite ways of entering tasks is that I'm able to link Things 3 with Spark, my email manager. And it's an awesome e email manager. What I can do is then I can hit a keyboard shortcut that immediately links the email into a task within things. So what this means is now when I'm in things and I go to do the task, I have a link that when I click on it, it pulls up the email that has all the information I'll need for that task. And this is beneficial because that means whenever I'm going through my emails, I can immediately archive them. You know, we've all had it where you have a task that you need to do from your email and that email is just kind of sitting in your box and it's cluttering it. But this allows you to get the email out of the way. And if you'd be interested in hearing more about how I used the Spark email app, uh, I love it and how it's actually helped me get to inbox zero with my email. I always keep my email at inbox zero. Uh, let me know down in the comments below and I would love to make a video about that. So as you can see, there are tons and tons of ways of inputting tasks or things. They offer a ton of flexibility and I really think it's one of the strong points of this application. Now the next category is organization. I think this is something that things definitely has some strong points but also has uh, some weaknesses as well. I like the way it's organized in the top left of the application. It's got uh, inbox, today, upcoming, anytime, sometime, logbook, and trash. Underneath those on the left side, it stores all your areas and projects. Now this is kind of how the hierarchy system in Things 3 works, is you've got areas, and those are you know the big areas of your life, um, and then under areas, you've got different projects that are from those areas, and then you have tasks that are from the projects. And this actually leads into one of my criticisms of the organization of things, of that hierarchy structure can sometimes be a little wonky depending on your situation. So for example, in my mind, it made sense that, you know, grad school would be an area, you know, it's an area of my life, grad school. But then the only hierarchy that's under area is project. So I was like, do I make a project for each class? But like, that doesn't really make sense and like how projects work that, that uh, just doesn't fit very well. So what I ended up having to do was I ended up making an area, a different area for each class that I have. And that allowed me to have each class have its own projects and tasks. And that works pretty well. It just doesn't feel like it fits with the rest of my areas where an area is kind of that entire aspect of my life rather than individual classes. So I wish they offered maybe a little more customization in the hierarchy structure, but that's something that you'll have to look at and see if that's too limiting for you or if you'll be able to make it work. They also let you on any uh, task or project add tags, although uh, I'd be cautious with tags. Uh, I've fallen into the trap before of thinking I need to you know, tag everything but then you realize that your tags aren't actually helping you. And I find that's actually most of the time the case is that you tag something, but is it really increasing your productivity? Is it really saving you time? Probably not. So uh, I'd be just really careful about how often you're using tags um, so that you're not uh, being inefficient. But uh, I do like that they give you the option with tags and uh, I've mainly used it of if I have like a task for the day that is like my number one task I need to get done. I've got an important tag. And so I'll put that task under important. And that way I know what is the one thing that I need to get done today. And overall, despite me wishing there was some more customization options with the hierarchy structure, I've really enjoyed using things and I've made it work for me. Now our next category is just kind of a generic 
extra features? What are the other just cool aspects of things that I wanted to mention? Now Things has its own cloud service so that whenever you, if you get things on your Mac and your iPad, your iPhone, Apple Watch, um, you're able to for free link up all of those so that whenever you complete a task on one, it's immediately completed on the other. There's no delay and I think it works really well for my experience. You're able to easily to do recurring tasks, uh, reminders for events, add deadlines for tasks, and that may seem like a small thing, though, adding deadlines for events, but that's actually really huge for me is a lot of times task managers, you can only just assign a date to it. And it's sometimes hard to know whether is that the date I'm gonna do it or is that the deadline? You know, you're not able to have two separate things, but I love in things that you're able to both assign the day you're gonna do it, but then also a deadline, because a lot of times, you know, you wanna work on something before the day it's actually due. You're able to link up your digital calendar. So I've got my uh, Google calendar that I use in Fantastical uh, synced into things so that when I look at my day view, not only can I see all the tasks I need to do, but at the top, it's got the different events that I've got going on for the day. I really like how with projects, they've got a little uh, progress bar. So based off how many of the tasks that you've checked off for that project, it'll show you how close you are to being done with it. And you can even within a single task, add a list of little things that you check off. So. This could make sense maybe if you're making a, you know, gro go grocery shopping and then within that task, you've got all of the grocery items that you wanna check off. This may seem like a small thing, but they give you the option when looking through your daily view of tasks to mark a task as this evening and that'll immediately push it down to the bottom until it gets to the evening. And this is really nice as sometimes when you're maybe at work or something like that, you don't wanna see all the tasks that you're gonna do when you get home later at night. So you're able to kind of push those tasks down and then when it gets to uh, the evening, you then can see all the tasks that you've designated for that. Things has a wonderful search function. You immediately can just start typing. You just start typing and it searches all of your tasks for what you're looking for. Uh, I have loved that. It's been really great for uh, searching for the various tasks that I have. And finally, I can't get over how much I like this feature is when, let's say for a day, you, you have a task set that you're gonna do today, but you just don't get to it. And honestly, that's the reality. We, we don't get to everything that we say we're gonna do. Well, a lot of other task managers, how they'll handle that is usually they'll say like overdue. You know, they'll say the, there'll be an alert the next day and say it's overdue. And then you kind of feel that pressure. Um, but in reality, you just didn't have time for it. You know, you pick to choose to do other things. But I love how things handles it is, let's say you don't get to a task, well, then when you go into the next day, it's just in the next day. And there's no, there's no alert, you don't have to go back and change the date from the previous day to the, to the next day. It just moves it for you. And that has been such a just time saver and it just makes me enjoy using it a lot more as I don't have all these, uh, you're late on this, you're late on that. Uh, it just moves the tasks along and I choose when I wanna get done and it just moves all the stuff I don't get done to the next day. Now our last category is price. And as you can see, this application has a ton of features. It's, it's really packed full with a lot of the stuff that you might be looking for in a task manager. But on the other hand, if you are gonna go all in on this, if you're gonna get the Mac, the iPad, the iPhone, and the Apple Watch version, you're spending near $80 on one application. That is that is a very high initial price tag. But how does this compare to other task managers out there and their pricing structures? Well, let me compare them and I'll actually show you why I find Things 3's uh, pricing structure to actually be a good deal. You see, many task managers out there right now are moving to subscription models. And one good example of this is Todoist. And Todoist has a free option, but as with most applications, the free option is very limited. You're only allowed, I think, five projects, and you're probably gonna exceed that if you're using it regularly. And so to do this, then you have to upgrade to the pro model, which is $3 per month. And many other task managers have a similar pricing structure to this, usually around that three, $4 a month, something like that. And so the way I see it is, you are investing in an application that you're not just gonna use for one, two, three years. I plan to, you know, obviously I don't know the future, but I'm hoping to use this application for the next decade. And so if you, you know, kind of do the math, if you're gonna use 
an application for more than three years, then Things 3 is gonna end up being cheaper than those subscription models. I so much more gravitate towards options where I actually own the application. I just pay for it once and I own it rather than something that's a subscription model. And if I don't keep paying, I lose it. And I think what really helps with this is Things 3 offers a 15 day free trial. And I've got a link to that down in the description below. And that was huge for me as it let me just with no pressure, try it out and see if this application is worth the $80 to me. Now I still do kind of wish things offered a maybe stripped down free version uh, as a lot of these other applications do, but I'll be honest, once you try the free trial, uh, you're probably gonna buy things. I, I feel like they're very confident in how good their product is, that they know if we can just get people to try the free trial, then they'll probably purchase it. So to bring everything to close, I really think there are two best options when you're looking for a task manager, and it's depending on who you are. First, I would recommend that you try one of the free task manager options out there if you're just starting out, you know? There's great options like uh, Apple Reminders, and I've actually got a link above Above to a video I did covering on how to use Apple Reminders as your task manager. Uh, like I mentioned, Todoist has a good free option. I think uh, TickTick is another good free task manager. And try one of those out and, and use it. And then if you find that you're running into limitations where you're either gonna need to upgrade to their subscription model or look for another option, that's when I then think things three could become a great option is if you hit those limitations, I highly recommend then checking out things three. I just think, uh, yes, it's a lot up front, but like I said, we're thinking long term here, and I think it's a good value in the long term. It's a great application. I have very few complaints of it, and I have loved using it overall. But there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time.